The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents First Class Requirements, starring Joe E. Brown and Richard Tyler. Alan Mowbray is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Periodically, you come across a newspaper account of someone starting off on a treasure hunt. Sometimes it's a group, and they expect to find a treasure that is reported to have been buried centuries ago. Most of us find delight in reading about an adventure of that kind. But did you ever stop to realize that life is really one big treasure hunt for everyone? And every day can be filled with thrilling adventure. Yes, life is a treasure hunt for happiness. But real happiness is found not in what we can get, but in what we give to make others happy, to help those in difficulty. That's something we all can do, especially in our homes, and it's part of the exciting daily adventure of living. And the most wonderful way to appreciate spiritual values in a home is by a family gathering together daily for family prayer. Family prayer is the road to real happiness because it brings a family closer to God. And having found God, we find the greatest treasure man can seek. Family prayer is a thrilling daily adventure in a home. The treasure hunt for God, for true happiness. Alan Mowbray returns following tonight's family theater story, First Class Requirements, starring Joey Brown and Richard Tyler. Good morning, Mayor Packett. Don't good morning me. Where's the guy that's running this sheet? This editorial. What does he think he's doing? Well, I'm sure I didn't have anything to do with it, sir. I'll see if he's in. Who's making all this? Now see here, Buchanan. Oh, oh, oh. Good morning, Packy. What honor brings the mayor to our office this morning? You know very well what's on my mind. Now get this straight. Another one of these editorials and I'll close up this place. That's talking big, Packy. We've got a job on the Sentinel here, and we're doing it as best we can. That's the only way I see to do it. All right, you ask for it. I'll get every advertiser in Rockton to boycott the Sentinel. It won't take me more than... You know, Packy, you haven't changed much during the years. It's like we were in school together. Still trying to run everything, aren't you? And I'm not going to have any two-bit, four-fleshing newspaper editor think that he can change it. Hmm. Your big city reporter reputation cuts no cake with me. Hey, that'd make a good editorial. The mayor cuts the cake. You can and I... <laughs> and eats it. All right. You're looking for trouble? I'll give it to you. Well, Margie, that must have been a great editorial this morning. Packets, puppets. Yeah, it seems like I touched a touchy spot with the mayor. Mr. Buchanan, if he closes the sentinel... Just... I'll lose my paper. But we'll go down fighting, Margie. And we're not finished yet. But Mr. Packett's been mayor for ten years. And everything was running smoothly till you came back and took over the paper. Really, he can do almost anything he wants in this town. Mm -hmm. That's just the trouble. Why, a man like that would... Oh, you again, Packy? You forget something? Ed, I've been thinking this over. There's no reason for us to be at loggerheads. Maybe you have something there. I'm out for a better city, and you're pledged by all your campaign promises to the same thing. Why, certainly. Only trouble is, you forgot your promises mighty fast. Oh, it's the pressure, Ed. You can't always do what you think you're going to do. You mean like closing the sentence? Oh, 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 a hasty word, Ed, a hasty word. Then I'm to understand you've decided to let us stay in business. That's generous. Mighty generous, Packy. Mighty generous. Ed, you said something a few minutes ago that touched me deeply. Oh? Us being in school together. Remember the good times we used to have and 
things always ran along smoothly. You mean when everything went your way? Well, there always has to be a boss man. That's how it is. It's like you used to say, someday you were going to own the newspaper in Rockton. And you do. And you were going to be boss man of the town. And you are. Ed, we're old friends. Old friends. Mm Mm-hmm. As long as no one goes prodding too deeply into the soft spots in the city administration. Is that it? I can make your paper a worthwhile paying proposition, Ed. Sure you can. And we'll still have the highest tax rate in the state and the all-time juvenile delinquency increase in the country. Ed, you seem to have forgotten how to play ball. No, Packy, I just don't like the way you're pitching. Okay, if that's the way you want it. I offered a proposition right and nice. Now I'll close this place down if it's the last thing I ever do. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you, Packy. You'll need it. Hey! Hey, fella! Where's the principal's office? Uh, She's over there someplace. What are you, a dick? A what? A detective. (laughs) <laughs> no, no. Don't you like detectives? Nah, they're always snooping around here. Is that so? Looking for what? Search me, mister. I don't know nothing. I ain't talking neither. Hey, what's your name, son? Bucky Dawson. What's yours? Ed Buchanan. Nice to meet you, Bucky. I'm just a... Hey, Bucky. Yeah? I, I thought you... Say, who's he? Ah, he's an all right guy. Hey, this is uh, Jack Thompson, mister. Hello. Hello, Jack. How do you know him, Bucky. Wasn't I just talking to him? What are you trying to do? Tell me my business? No, it's just the gang's waiting for you. So I thought I could... All right, let him wait. I ain't got much important for a meeting anyhow. Hey, where do you fellas hang out? Oh, we fixed a little place up... Shut up, will you? Like I tell you, he's an all right guy. Ain't you got no brains? Don't trust nobody, see? Hey, what are you all head up about? Come on, let's get out of here. Principal's office over that way? Yeah, yeah, that door, mister. Thanks, son. I've been waiting for you. Sorry I was delayed, but Please I... Please sit down. Thank you. I know you want to get a story about what happened last night, but there's no value in publicizing these misdemeanors. I don't agree with you, Miss Davis. Mr. Buchanan, we had several episodes of this kind before your arrival, and the police were well able to cope with the situation. Further publicity will only encourage these unfortunate incidents. I see. On another occasion, I spoke to Mr. Proctor, the former editor of the Sentinel, and he quite agreed with me. It only weakens respect for the school administration to give these affairs public notice. But that policy hasn't stopped these... these exploits, has it? Mr. Buchanan, I am sure the school authorities can handle very competently any difficulties that arise. Would you mind if I saw the results of the latest episode? Wasn't it the chemistry lab that was broken into? I can't understand how boys could act in such a barbarous manner. I don't know what kind of homes they come from. And the city's deficient recreational facilities. Don't you think that's a big cause for your delinquency problems? What we need, Miss Davis, are some good youth organizations. Some up-to-date facilities and plans. Mayor Packett has elaborate plans for... You mean the same ones that I understand were shelved last year? Mr. Buchanan, it seems we have different viewpoints. Oh. Then there's no use in wasting time. I guess the best thing for me to do is to see the chemistry lab on my way out. If I may. It's a disgrace. Desks have been ripped up and overturned and valuable equipment smashed. And you don't know who's responsible. I'm sure it's some of that group from the east end of town. But we can never discover the ringleaders. They all stick together with some absurd code of honor. Don't you think that shows something good? Good? Ridiculous. They have a code of honor. Call it absurd, warped, or anything you want, but it's good. You don't seem to know very much about child psychology, Mr. Buchanan. No, maybe not in technical terms and books, but I know a little bit about boys. You see, I happen to have been one once myself. Mr. Buchanan, this is no laughing matter. I'm quite serious. In fact, Miss Davis, I'd like to have your permission to try something with these boys. I don't know if it'll work, but it's an idea. I think a good idea. Would it be possible to assemble that East End group here together? I'd like to talk to them. I can't see that any good will come of that. We've had various speakers at school assemblies on numerous occasions. Well, no harm will come of it. It's worth trying, I assure you. Very well. I think it can be arranged. Good. Tomorrow's Friday. Let's make it uh, tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock.
But, Mr. Buchanan, why should I give you my empty store for these boys to play? Tony, don't you want to help them? Why should I help? They steal my fruit, throw over the box, break my window in the empty store. Someday I'm going to catch them and kill them. You know who does it? How should I know? They, 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 they're just like the rabbits. They think it's a big fun and nobody can catch them. Well, Tony, look, here's the deal. You let me have the store and I'll take care of the boys. I'll guarantee you, you won't have any more trouble with them. Mr. Buchanan, I think maybe you're crazy. Nobody <laughs> can tame the wild rabbits. Well, maybe we can, Tony. What do you say? So, tonight you want me to open the store? Yes, I have to have it tonight. And you bring the boys? I hope so, yes. And you pay the damage? Tony, I don't think there'll be any damages. No damage? No. Then this is something I gotta see. Kids, they, they, they're going to ruin me. Hey, what's happening, Tony? They said you talk to them this afternoon at the school. You say to open the store. So, now what are going to happen? I told them at school about our first club meeting. They were supposed to wait outside until I arrived to open the store. Uh, you see, you can't do nothing with these kids. They're just like a wild in the end. Hey, what do you got there, Mr. Buchanan? Oh, the box and a glow. Yeah. Hey, that's a good thing. <laughs> Beat him up. No, 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 Tony. Maybe you and I can put on a fight for the kids. Well, uh, what? No, 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 Mr. Buchanan. <laughs> you big man. That's enough for me. <laughs> okay, Tony. Then you and I are going to find out who are the toughest kids in this bunch. Then we can go to work on them. Hey. Hey. Hey, fellas. Come on, let's have a little quiet. Hey, look what that guy's got. Boxing gloves. Let me have them, mister. Huh? A little quiet first. Quiet. Okay, fellas, get around there. Now, sit down on the floor, any place. You guys over there, break it up. Come over here. Let's get a little organized. Hey, them gloves had a real McCoy. Mm -hmm. Let's put them on, huh? Mr. Buchanan, why don't you chase them home before they start a fight? I break up on my store. Wait a minute. Take it easy, Tony. Okay, okay. Now, did any of you guys ever see the Indian rope trick? No. All right, well, be quiet, quiet. Just a moment. You see, it's the simplest thing in the world. Here's the rope. You can turn it into a knot. Twist it to anything you want. Nothing to it. Now, presto. Stands up straight. <laughs> hey, that's a good trick. How you do it, Mr. Buchanan? Shh, it's got a wire inside. <laughs> Nothing to it, fellas. Presto, and it stands up straight. Well, there you are. That's the Indian rope trick. I'll tell you how it's done someday. There's nothing to it. It's like a lot of things you guys can learn to do. Good things. And you can have a lot of fun doing them. You know, I, I heard some reports about you fellas, that you're pretty tough. Okay, I want to find out the toughest guy in the crowd. I am. And anybody says it ain't so, I'll knock this block off, see? You know, Bucky, you do a lot of talking sometimes. Says who? I just told you. Well, I'll show you. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, wait a minute. Break right, it up. Right. Break it up. Wait a minute. If you guys want to settle a question, let's make it a fair bout. Here, Jack, here. You take one pair of gloves and that's your corner. Now you can pick your seconds. Over there's your corner, Bucky. Come on, Bucky. We'll show Thompson who's boss around here. Right. Come on. That's the way to do it, fellas. Form a ring. All right, give him lots of room. You all want to see a square fight, is that oh, right? you bet, mister. Bucky will knock him cold, won't you? All right, now, wait a minute. Here, come on, Bucky, Jack. Now, these are the rules in this game. No low punches, and if you get in a clinch, separate when I tell you. It's going to be fair play and a clean sport. Okay with you, Jack? I'm ready. Bucky? Just let me out of my murder, the bum. You, you talk too much. Uh, uh, all right. Come on, Bucky, show him how to do it. Break, break. Keep it on the level. Get out of that clinch. Come on, back up. All right. Come on, Jack, and I come on, boy. Hold your nose. All right. This is going to mean a trouble, Mr. Buchanan. It's a good we got rid of all those kids. Maybe, maybe he's dead. No, he's coming around. He's all right. Gosh, I'm sorry it happened. I didn't mean to. Oh, 
Where am I? You're all right, Bucky. Feeling better now? Ooh. <laughs> I must have... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I slipped, huh? Yeah, that's all right. You slip into his fist. <laughs> no, it was a fair fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess you got me that time, Jack. It was luck. You okay now? Sure. Sure, I never felt better. See, I can hop around. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Guess I'm a little wobbly. I'll drive you home, Bucky. All right, if I go along? Sure, I want to talk to you, Jack. I think we have some plans that we can work out together. Hey, hey, am I in on those plans, huh? Whatever they are, Bucky and I are pals. Always have been. That's what I like to hear. All right, come on, fellas, let's go. Uh, Mr. Buchanan, just a minute, huh? Yeah? I, uh, I want to say something. All right, what is it, Tony? Well, you know, I think maybe you're not so crazy. Well, thanks, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I see how you do it. You, you, you're not going to knock out these kids. You're going to let them knock out each other. <laughs> That's a smart. Tony, after tonight's experience, I think I'll change my tactics. I've got a better idea. You can drop me any place here. Jack? You don't talk much, do you? If you don't talk, mister, don't make mistakes. That's the way I got it figured. When I was your age, Jack, I had one big ambition. I wanted to become a newspaper man. And I thought the biggest thing in the world would be running the Rockton paper. Yeah? I heard you own it, too. Somehow, now that I've got what I went after, it isn't the biggest thing in the world anymore. No? Then maybe it isn't what you really wanted. Me? I know. You really know what you want? I'm not talking, but... Uh... Maybe someday I'll run this town. Oh, you're going into politics. Maybe. Maybe not. I'll figure out some racket. Like being the brains behind the gang. You can call it that. You know, Jack, I've been thinking you and I might be able to do some organizing together. Like what? Been a lot of fellas in this part of town who've gotten into trouble. Some of them got shipped off to reform school. That's because they weren't smart. Oh, like you? I watch myself. How would you like a job after school, Jack? At your newspaper? Doing what? I wasn't thinking of the newspaper. It's a bigger job than that. What do I get out of it? I'll put it this way. You'll get out of it whatever you're ready to put into it. I don't get you. Jack, you've heard of the Boy Scouts of America. <laughs> Boy Scouts, sure. They do a lot of nutsy things like tying knots and digging holes. Mm -hmm. You don't know much about them, do you? Well, they tried to start a troop up at the church that I went to, but none of the gang chummed <laughs> up to it. That's kid stuff. That's where you're wrong. But I guess you wouldn't be interested in scouting. It needs resourcefulness and self-reliance. You gotta be a guy that others can depend on. A guy who won't quit when the going is rough. Say, what are you trying to give me? I never quit or double-crossed anybody in my life. Don't you think what happened at the chemistry lab was a double-cross? How do you know I had anything to do with that? After seeing you fight tonight, I... I kind of figure you as a fellow who wouldn't be afraid to tell the truth. It's that Dolan that teaches Kim. He's always trying to push us around keeping us after school for experiments. You work your fool head off and then you get flunked. So we fixed his wagon. In other words, you couldn't take it. What do you mean, what? Yeah, I never thought of it that way. Sure, I can take it. Jack. It, yeah? Good night, Jack. Oh, oh yeah. Good night. Oh, Jack. I guess after tonight, we'd better call off the club idea, huh? You mean you're gonna quit? Oh, got a better idea? Better offer? I'm gonna talk to the gang. See you tomorrow. So long. So long. And say, Mr. Buchanan. Yes, Jack? Thanks. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Good afternoon. The Sentinel, the community watchman. Where'd you pick that up? It's Mr. Buchanan's new slogan. This is Packet. Put Buchanan on. The community watched him. It's Mayor Packet. Mr. Buchanan, maybe this is the chance you've been hoping for to win him over. With advertising down 50%, something's got to happen fast. Switch it over. Buchanan speaking. Buchanan, I'm giving you a last warning. I was hurt by your first editorial on taxes, and Packy's puppets got me angry. 
But now you've gone too far. I won't stand to have my name dragged through the streets of Rockton as the one responsible for the juvenile delinquency in this town. That's liable. And I'll have you and every dead-ratted member of your staff in jail before I finish. You know, Packy, I've been thinking this over, too. Maybe we can get together after all. Why, yeah, I'm happy to hear that. Oh, <laughs> I knew you'd see the light sooner or later. Here's the way I see it. You depend on the voters to get into office. These editorials aren't giving the voters, to say the least, the best impression of you. So what are you getting at? I'll put it this way. It's too bad a man of your ability can't turn your hand to a good deed every day. Why, listen here, Buchanan. I've been mayor of this town ten years. I've built streets and public buildings. And don't forget the kids' recreational parks. I'm coming to that. I've got a set of plans here that are the finest in the country. And as for juvenile delinquents, I've increased the police department and detective service. I've built the reform school and I... Don't you think you're working backwards? Uh... Backwards? Yes. Why not build up the kids before you put roads down and buildings up? Why not try to give kids ideals and worthwhile ambitions before you set out to reform what can be prevented? There's no libel in the Sentinel's kick that a lot of noise is made and a lot of money spent on all your building are good roads to take kids to a reform school. Packy, I was hoping we could talk things over, that you'd begin to see the light. Maybe you will. Anyway, you've given me an idea for tomorrow's editorial. I suggest you read it. It'll give you some constructive ideas. I'm going to title it, The Boy Scouts of America Come to Rockton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and boys of Rockton, we're holding this public meeting in the Civic Auditorium tonight because of a good deed that happened in England nearly 40 years ago. This is the story. On a foggy evening in London, an American publisher lost his way in the maze of dark streets. He was surprised when a boy approached him and said... Well, you seem to be lost, sir. Hmm? Oh, yes, I was looking for Derry Street. Oh, I know where that is, sir. Why, it's just... I'll just lead the way. It'll be worth a shilling to you. All right, I'll... it's just down the street, sir. Oh, but I can't accept a tip for a good turn. I'm a scout. <laughs> well, I never heard of... You say scout? Oh, yes, sir. You see, every scout's expected to do a daily good deed. Well, that's very interesting. How did all this start? Well, Lord Baden-Powell, who was a former army officer, started the Boy Scout movement. He felt it was a wonderful way to give young people a fraternity, to develop them spiritually, morally, and physically. Well, it's very interesting. The Scout Oath puts it this way, sir. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Well, that's excellent. I must see this Baden-Powell. This is a movement we need in America. That man was William Boyce, ladies and gentlemen. He returned to America and started the scout movement here. And it has grown until now there have been over 13 million Boy Scouts in this country. But Rockton hasn't had a single troop. Yet any permanent community organization like the church, a school, or a responsible group of citizens can start a troop. And what is it going to mean for the boys of Rockton? It's a program of fun and adventure to teach good citizenship reverence to God and respect for others, where boys learn to cooperate in the responsibilities of home, of school, of church, and of neighborhood. We've had a lot of talking about taxes and troubles in this community. Now let's start a practical reform for our boys. Hello, Miss Davis. Mr. Buchanan, mm -hmm. over six months ago, you visited my office at the high school. Now I'm coming to see you, to tell you I was wrong. Today, a group of those East End boys came to my office. Mm -hmm. They offered to pay the expenses for the vandalism in the chemistry lab. I could hardly believe it. Splendid, Buchanan. Why, the whole town is behind, beginning to get behind the movement. I don't know why I never thought of the idea myself. Maybe you were too busy, Mayor. Well, I did my good deed for today. I signed our first tax reduction bill. Mr. Buchanan, mm -hmm. we got another troop organized in the west end of town. The pastor there is even helping out a scoutmaster. He's a good guy. I mean, well, what I mean is, <laughs> he's a good guy. You're kind of happy about it, Jack. Sure thing. I used to think he was an old fuddy-duddy till I got to know him. And you used to think the scouts were nuts, tying knots and digging holes. Yeah. I thought they were a bunch of softies. But I'm learning, Mr. Buchanan. The toughest thing in the world is to be tough on yourself. Well, 
Hey, Mr. Buchanan, so everybody talk about you. Now they're going to make you mayor. No, oh, no, no, Tony, I got enough to do trying to run the Sentinel with Jack, my cub reporter here. <laughs> and we're going to write a story on you, Mr. Angelo. Yeah, no, 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 no story about me, please. Make a story about the good deed Mr. Buchanan will do. Hello, Mr. Buchanan. Well, hello, Bucky. Hi. You know, you know, <laughs> Butchie, he work for me. Uh, <laughs> Bucky, Mr. Angelo, Bucky. Uh, Butchie, Bucky, what's the difference? It's just the same. He say he want to work two days a week for nothing because he stole the apples and break up the window. I pay him a good because now he's my boy. Nice going, Bucky. A scout requirement to do your best. And maybe that's what Rockton's going to have from now on from everybody. First class requirements. This is Alan Mowbray again. You know, we all find a quiet satisfaction in knowing that we have helped others, that we have done something to make them happier. It's the joy of giving, the greatest lesson we can learn. Yes, and there's a double pleasure in being able to brighten the lives of those we love. Maybe sometimes we think we don't have many opportunities to do that. But isn't it true, if we look back at yesterday, at a number of yesterdays, there were many opportunities for good deeds that we might have used. God is goodness and those who are close to him seek in everything an opportunity to do good. That's why, in a home where there is the daily practice of family prayer, there is a spirit of godliness, a spirit of goodness. Faith brings a family close together in the bonds of understanding and love, and the expression of our faith in God through the daily practice of family prayer means lasting unity and love. For the family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Joey Brown and Richard Tyler for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Mark Carney for writing tonight's play and to Max Tear for his music. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Anne Tobin, Ken Christie, Eddie Firestone, Jane Novello, Charles Maxwell and Peter Rankin. Next week, our Family Theatre stars will be Donald Crisp and Beverly Tyler in For Bunny Annie Laurie. Your host will be Ray Milland. This is Alan Mowbray saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theatre broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our family theater stars will be Donald Crisp and Beverly Tyler with Ray Milland as host. Merrill Ross speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.